This man right here, his name is Joe Kennedy. He was the coach at Bremerton High School. And this high school fired Joe Kennedy for- This is so fun. This is so bogus. This is the type of argument they try to use at- Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan. Spoiler alert, the world hates Christianity. You know, there's no denying that in our culture today, truth is under attack. And, you know, not your truth. I'm talking about the truthy truth. You know, God's truth. The truth of God's word is under attack. And Christians are the target because we stand on God's truth, at least some of us do. But if you notice, we are creating a society that is upholding and uplifting and praising any religion under the sun except for Christianity. You know, the Bible actually speaks on the hatred that the world will have for us. The Daily Grace Company is a wonderful company. They have Bible study guides. They have pens and highlighters. They have journals. They have prayer cards, verse cards, Bibles. If you use our link in the description below, it helps us out. Uh, it costs you nothing, but it will help us out. Hey, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube will push it out to more people and it would really help spread this message. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. John chapter 15, starting in verse 18, says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. This is Jesus talking. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. This isn't saying that, hey, the world might really hate you or the or the world might despise you. There might be some contention there. There might be some persecution. No, the, Jesus is saying the world is going to hate you because the world hates me. And then look at this in 1 Peter chapter 4. Starting in verse 12, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing is happening. This is saying that the persecution, the trials that come against us, this isn't a strange thing. Don't think it's unique to you, like you are the only one being attacked for your belief in Jesus Christ. This is something that is going to happen. And it says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. You know, Jesus Christ suffered on our behalf, and a part of being a follower of Jesus is suffering with Jesus. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. You see, the thing is, is that we don't need to be defeated in the sufferings we partake in. We don't need to be defeated in persecution or by trials, but instead through them, the Bible promises that we will have exceeding joy if we remain faithful in our belief and in our message of the gospel. Verse 14, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. We are blessed when we are reproached, when we are persecuted, when we are attacked for our faith. And then it continues, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. So while the world is blaspheming the name of Christ while persecuting you, the name of Christ is being glorified through your steadfast endurance. Those who are advocates of godless freedom to sin hate biblical Christianity. They hate scripture. They hate those who hold to scripture. This persecution comes from individuals. It comes from groups. It comes from governments. Even our own government has engaged in persecuting Christians who do not acknowledge certain immoral behaviors. That persecution will continue. That's where this story comes in. Coach Kennedy to be reinstated at Washington School after Supreme Court prayer ruling. So this man right here, his name is Joe Kennedy. He was the coach at Bremerton High School. And this high school fired Joe Kennedy 
for going to the 50-yard line after games and praying. Now, this wasn't a prayer circle that he forced students to be a part of. It was something that he did individually as a believer. He would go by himself, kneel down, and give thanks and honor and praise to the name of Jesus Christ. As a devout Christian, Kennedy maintained a practice of going to the 50-yard line after games and kneeling in prayer, often with fans and players joining him. Now, none of this was forced. He did not require anybody else to participate in prayer. But there were other believers that would come and join him willingly, wanting to give praise and glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Disciples never came to Jesus and said, teach us how to walk on water. That's pretty amazing. Teach us how to cast out a demon. Teach us how to raise the dead. Never once. But they came to him and said, would you teach us how to pray? That tells me that maybe the most extraordinary thing about the life of our Lord was his communion with his father. They said nobody prayed like that. The school district believed that this prayer violated the establishment clause of the First Amendment. So it violates the First Amendment... <laughs> This is so fun. This is so bogus. This is the type of argument they try to use that when you actually use your First Amendment, uh, that you're violating the First Amendment. That's the logic of the world. They hate you so much that they don't make any sense when they try to come against you. But the point is, is that they're trying to stop this man from praying because they hate God. And they hate you as a Christian. And check this out. In January, the U.S. Supreme Court agreed to take up Kennedy's case and heard oral arguments in late April. The school district filed a request to dismiss the case in February by claiming that the case was moot because Kennedy moved to Florida. However, Kennedy's legal team clarified that the coach temporarily relocated to care for a sick family member. In late June, the justice ruled in Kennedy's favor with a 6-3 to three decision. Well, it's good to know that three of our Supreme Court justices do not believe in freedom. So this says, Kennedy prayed during a period when school employees were free to speak with a friend, call for a reservation at a restaurant, check email, or attend to other personal matters. He offered his prayers quietly while his students were otherwise occupied. Still, the Bremerton School District disciplined him anyway. And this was Neil Gorsuch, one of the justices in uh, on the uh, Supreme Court. Listen to this. Both the free exercise and free speech clause of the First Amendment protect expressions like Mr. Kennedy's. The Constitution and the best of our traditions counsel mutual respect and tolerance, not censorship and suppression. They've already come after your children, and for most of you, they got them. They got them through the public schools and indoctrination in the university and indoctrination. And then you wonder why your children come out not serving the Lord. It's because you fed them right into the devil's mouth. So little by little, the net is closing around. And then it's not little by little. Look how fast things are going downhill just in a matter of weeks. But at the same time, know this. Persecution is always meant for evil, but God always means it for good. And is it not better to suffer in this life to have an extra weight of glory? In heaven. Now, imagine if the school did this, took this kind of action against somebody that went onto the field to do a seance, some pagan ritual, or name the religion that isn't Christianity. Do you think the school for a second would have taken action? No, of course not. Because one, Satan doesn't care about that because those religions lead to eternal separation from God. And these people are controlled by Satan. That's the thing. And also, our society has said that is bigotry to come against anything but Christianity. So, this school district was only doing the work of its father, Satan. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you think. Praise God that justice was done for a fellow brother in Christ. And hey, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? I would love to hear from you on a regular basis. And also, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know, when you like this video, YouTube will push it out to more people and it would help spread this message. And come meet me over on Patreon. I will have my Patreon linked in the description below. We can get to know each other on a more personal level. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.